We're here at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport, Terminal 3, getting ready to unveil a historic World War I aircraft, a SPAD-13. Coming up next on the Issues on the Road. Hi, I'm Vice Mayor Dave Siebert. We're at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport, Terminal 3, getting ready to dedicate the SPAD-13, a historic World War I aircraft that Frank Luke Jr. flew in his heroic exploits in France. With me today is Major Fred Ferguson, retired. Fred, thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, I tell you what, I really appreciate the fact that you were willing to serve on our ad hoc committee to commemorate historic Arizona aviators and aviation in general and the important role that it played in Arizona's history. Aviation has been a, a part of Arizona history for years, uh, especially during World War II, as you know, when they discovered our fine weather out here and built Air Force or Army Air Corps bases everywhere, and we still have two of them left. But uh, a, a lot of uh, warriors from World War II trained here and went on to, to win the, the, the war of uh, WW2. That's absolutely correct, and a huge economic in impact. A lot of the people that live here today really came from uh, the people, that, the servicemen that trained here and realized not only is it great weather for flying, it's great weather for living. And so, so many people moved out here. Absolutely did. Uh, I'm a Texan transplanted, as you know, and uh, we came out here in 47 right after World War II because my dad was in the construction business and it was building, and uh, this was the place to build. And, uh, that's, why, that's how I got here. Well, I tell you what, I know you went to Phoenix Union High School, graduated from there, and uh, you were in combat in Vietnam, and you were a recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, why it's important to remember the history that this uh, exhibit is going to portray for many years to come. But I think the important thing about is that the majority of the displays that we're going to have here is military aviation. Now we've had a lot of civilian aviation here too. Uh, you probably remember that Goldwater started Sky Harbor Airport with his brother by dragging a runway down by the Salt River. It's grown a little since then, but uh, uh, you and I are standing here in front of a TV camera. And we can say pretty much whatever we want to say to the audience out there, within reason, of course. But we can, we can criticize politicians like yourself, if I were so inclined, or say almost anything we want to. And we can do that because these people have gone before us and they've kept our freedom. Uh, it's, it's so important to me, anyway, as, as, a, as a retired military person, uh, that... Uh, our freedom is, is such a cherished thing. Our liberty is so grand. And there's a lot of people nowadays that don't seem to understand that. And that these men and women went in harm's way ahead of us and the ones that are doing it today just so that we can do this or we can go where we want to without a paper or whatever. That's absolutely correct. You know, the freedoms that we enjoy, there was a few people that paid a heavy price for that. And an awfully heavy price for that. They gave their lives. Absolutely. They gave their limbs. Uh, and, and, you know, there's, what I think is important is the fact that we can have children that can see these exhibits, learn the history through art, not only through the paintings that are going to be exhibited here today and unveiled today, but also this fine aircraft that's right behind us, the SPAD-13 that it Frank is, Luke flew. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I tell you why. And, and, you know, being a, an aviator today, uh, you, you look back at that and, and you wonder, you know, those guys had to have a lot of intestinal fortitude to go up in one of those darn things and fight and shoot at each other. And, you know, that, that little beauty is, is I mean, look, look at the size of it. I mean, that's a kite. Yes, it's a kite. It's wood and fabric, dope and fabric, and it's uh, the only thing standing between them and a bullet is just that. Is, is, is a piece of cloth. And, 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 a, and a little bit of wood, and they took this thing to 20,000 feet, and there's no pressurization. They didn't have oxygen. You know, I mean, if you look at the, the, the ground they laid uh, with these, these airplanes, these were remarkable individuals, all of them, every one of them. And uh, the fact that Frank Luke Jr. was known as the Arizona Balloon Buster, the balloons were actually tougher targets than uh, the actual aircraft. They, they were filled with hydrogen, and when you shot them with incendiary bullets, what we call tracers nowadays, they exploded. And the chances are that they could take you out with them if you were close enough. So, no, it was a, it's a tough way to make a living. It really is. Major, thank you for you all your, you. that you've done for our country, and thank you for being here, and thank you for serving on our ad hoc committee to make this a reality. Uh, it was my pleasure, sir. Thank you, sir. You bet you.
teaching Arizona aviation history through art. And with me today is Robert McCall in front of your beautiful painting of Frank Luke Jr. This was a delight to do. And I am so thrilled and excited about doing paintings of these heroes. This is a Medal of Honor. And it's pictured here, and I met. I felt that this had to be part of the painting. But he was a handsome man. He was just 21 when he died. He was called a balloon buster. A fantastic personality with great skills in flying and marksmanship. And he shot down enemy balloons in World War I. And this is his aircraft with the markings and the number and all appropriately. And it was a joy to do. And you see the German observation balloon, which yeah. was obviously the way they could tell where their artillery shells were landing and, of course, killing our troops. And so he felt it, uh, he, he had this intense desire to knock out those balloons so that they couldn't shell yes. his friends and our soldiers. Yes. He was a very uh, courageous and heroic individual. And uh, painting his image was uh, a delight. And I'm very pleased with the result. I love that face. He was young, 21 years old when he died, and just a youth, a fine example of uh, American manhood. We're here with Don Luke, nephew of Frank Luke Jr. Don, thank you for being here today. You bet, Dave. Tell me what, uh, some of the exploits of Frank Luke and some of the, the really heroic things that he did. Well, you know, to just sum up Frank's history, in 16 days, he had 18 kills. Eddie Rickenbacker said that if Frank Luke would have lived, you'd have never known my name. Because Frank had beat Eddie Rickenbacker's record in six weeks, and Rickenbacker had been there six months. So it gives you an idea how aggressive Frank really was. One other little piece of history, there were three squadrons on the front where Frank was. 50% of the kills in balloons were attributed to Frank Luke Jr. And those balloons were tougher targets than an aircraft were. Oh, substantially tougher. What, what people don't understand about the balloons is they were protected by aircraft above. So if they saw an aircraft come to attack, they'd go after it. And there was machine guns placed around the bottom to protect the balloons because this was the enemy's eyes. They could look right into the trenches and direct cannon fire. So this was their observation. So to fly through literally a wall of bullets and then get to be greeted by enemy aircraft was really dangerous work. And oftentimes, the balloon didn't go down when you just shot it. The, the gas had to mix with air before it became volatile or would burn. So many times, you'd have to make two or three passes before you could actually burn a balloon and send it down. And so, truly, Frank was the most heroic fighter pilot of World War I. Well, he had a mission. He had a mission, and, and he, he carried was, it out. He was very focused. Well, tell us about uh, the aircraft behind us. What do you think of it? Oh, I think, I think this is phenomenal. I've had the opportunity to see a SPAD before. I've seen some small models and some pictures of SPADs painted in Frank's colors of his squadron. And this is the first time I've seen a, a full-size, real SPAD. I think it's phenomenal. And this is real. This is one of, I believe, five in the world. It's about 80% original. They took three uh, SPAD aircraft to make one complete good one. And it's very rare aircraft. And I couldn't think of a better color to put it in than Frank Luke Jr.'s. Well, I think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful thing that City's done. You know, Frank left a legacy for this state. And I think it's a nice thing for the city to do and show his legacy with this plane. But Don, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our roots at the base trace back to the Dell Webb Construction Company, who began excavation there on March 29th of 1941. The base was named Luke Field in honor of Lieutenant Frank Luke, who you've heard so much about and could not be more appropriately named for an American hero. And the site was then and, and remains now a perfect location to train pilots with year-round excellent flying weather, vast stretches of desert that are ideal for bombing and aerial gunnery practice. With me is Mark Leonard, who is the Director of Public Works and also the Interim Director of Budget and Research. Yes. 
and also the chairman of our ad hoc committee to help uh, bring history through art and aviation. And you truly were the most instrumental staff person on making sure that this happened from a staff perspective. You went up to Tillamook, Oregon with us, you looked at it, you did the research, you uh, helped get the funding. In fact, you were there when the money was transferred so that we could actually take possession and start disassembling the aircraft. It was a great day. It, it was, and many years worth of work. Yes, yes it was. So tell me what you think of the final product. Oh, I, you know, as I, as I walked in this morning and I saw it uh, on the display, I, my first thought was that it, it was an honor to be a part of it. And I'd seen the airplane uh, in different settings, but to see it here and what it represents to the city, to the history of, of aviation in, in, in Arizona, and to the Luke family, I, I'm just pleased to be a part of it. Uh, and I don't uh, want to disagree with you too much on camera, but I was one of many people, Mr. Vice Mayor, and we followed your vision. We followed your leadership on this, and it was, it was an honor to do so. Well, I certainly want to thank all of the personnel in the aviation department. They all put a lot of work into this and the people in public works that, that worked on it, and from Frank Fairbanks, our city manager, all the way down through the uh, uh, Danny Murphy, uh, who's our aviation director, and Dave Kreider, who's the deputy city manager, and was the aviation director when we started this project. Mm -hmm. All of those folks did a lot of work on this. And, and truly, what was the most satisfying to me was seeing the looks on the people's faces when they're either coming here to see it on purpose or just getting off an airplane and coming through the gate and looking at this, and they stop, they dig into their carry-on baggage, they pull out their cameras, and they start taking pictures. And you see flashers all around you because they're doing it on a regular basis. This is truly a work of art that people appreciate. If you would have seen my face when I walked in, you would have seen the same look, and I, I knew what to expect more than others that are passing by. It's just a, it's just a wonderful exhibit. Uh, I'm humbled by it, and I'm an honored to be a part of it. I truly am, and I'll, I'll be passing it every time I come through this terminal building and talking to my kids about it. Well, thank you very much for all the hard work you did on it. You're welcome, thank you. The hero that this plane is representing uh, is one of those young men or women that have gone off and uh, made the ultimate sacrifice. And I think today, this also represents honoring all military individuals. So this is the painting of Ruth Daly Helm, one of our famous WASP pilots from World War II. Tell us about this painting. Well, it was um, a special delight to do a woman, and she's the only woman in this group of five portraits that I've done of Arizona aviation heroes. And she's a very beautiful woman, as you can see. And I met her. She came to my home. She is now 90 years old. And, uh, but she is so proud of that experience that she had. She trained, and she was able to fly P-47s. She flew the P-38, the lightning aircraft. And so that's why they're pictured in the sky. And the flag is simply an effort to somehow glorify this woman uh, for her heroism, and because it takes heroism to fly these aircraft. And she flew the aircraft from the factory to the place where the uh, pilots would then train to fly overseas and in her combat. And the P-38 was a very difficult airplane to fly, and, uh, and you yeah. show her climbing into the cockpit yeah. of a P-38, and she was certified for that aircraft. Exactly. And uh, this is uh, these are the wings that uh, these wasps wore. Uh, that's what they were called, uh, women in the Air Force. And uh, as you can see, there are 48 stars in the flag, which was appropriate for that time. And um, I think it's, it, it's evolved Absolutely. very successfully. Absolutely beautiful painting. With me today is Ruth Daly Helm, a woman Army service pilot known as the Wasps. She served in World War II and flew P-38s. With her today is her daughter, Sydney. So Ruth, tell me today, what was, what caused you to get involved in, in aviation? What was the driving force because you truly were a pioneer for women to be in aviation. Due to the airport ambiance combined with her fragile voice, we couldn't hear most of the interview. Ruth explained that when she was 11 years old, a barnstormer landed in their pasture within their small town. His plane was in need of repair, and her father was the only one in town with a tool shop and a complete tool set. The pilot wasn't able to pay, so he offered her father a free ride in the plane. Ruth's mom wouldn't let her father fly but Ruth saw the plane and pleaded with her mom for a ride. Her mom finally agreed, 
and once Ruth experienced her first plane ride and saw everything below her, she knew flying was for her. We're now in front of the painting of Arthur Van Heeren Jr., who's a naval aviator from Arizona, longtime uh, Arizona family. And describe what's in this painting. Well, this is um, Van Heeren. Uh, Arthur is his first name. And um, his family brought to me a group of photographs that I had needed, of course, to paint a likeness of this man and a diary of his days in combat flying off of carriers in the South Pacific. This is his aircraft, and that is Arthur in the cockpit. And that's the correct number, of course, for the aircraft that he flew. The, the Hellcat. And, and uh, he uh, shot down more enemy aircraft than, I think, he won the Navy, star, uh, the Navy Cross. Um, and uh, he was one of the early aces for the Navy. And a uh, courageous guy, uh, committed to uh, his uh, role as a combat pilot and uh, had some harrowing experiences, as you might imagine, but survived the war, became a lawyer in Arizona, right. and lived out his uh, years. He uh, became a uh, Phoenix judge, and his son was one of our city attorneys. Yes. He was the city attorney a few uh -huh. years ago, Peter Van Heeren, yeah. and uh, truly a magnificent, magnificent painting. Thank you. Very detailed, just amazing. You can look at for example, the pants, and you can see the shadows and the fact that the wind is blowing across yeah. the carrier deck. Yeah. Uh, there's just so much detail in these paintings. I just encourage anybody, when they get the chance, to come down to the aviation department and check these paintings out. Yeah. I'm here with Alma Haywood, and we're here commemorating Vernon Haywood, a famous Tuskegee Airman. Alma, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. So what do you think of the painting? I, you know, I think the painting is very, very, very good, and uh, is a lot of detail that I didn't expect to be in it. And I think he did a gorgeous job on it. Yeah, Robert McCall yeah. is such a fabulous artist. Yeah. And, you know, Vernon and his, his exploits, when he started as a Tuskegee Airman, Truly, you know, one of the best aviators, and talk about a little bit what you remember. Well, the one thing that I remember about him most is, is Vernon was always wanting to be a pilot, and he went through cadet training, he went through college, and he decided that this is what he really wanted to do after he did his cadet training. And he uh, was in the service for quite a long time, and he wanted to go, when he was stationed here at davis Monthan, he was squadron commander, and he wanted to go to Vietnam. And uh, so he insisted, because of his health, they didn't want him to go. But he said that he wanted to go, if he was going to send his troops to Vietnam, he wanted to go with them. So he insisted with the commander, and they decided that he would go to Vietnam. And that was, that was his choice. Alma, tell me when Vernon first went to Williams Air Force Base. Well, at the time, Vernon was stationed in Lockburn, Ohio, and uh, this is when Truman demanded uh, uh, that the, uh, all the services would be integrated. There would be no more segregations in the Air Force. So Vernon was, was one of the four that was sent to uh, Williams Air Force Base to desegregate the base and teach flying at that time. And so the, during his tour, of course, the, they had a lot of fun and they enjoyed it and uh, they were very well accepted. So Vernon decided after he left Williams Air Force Base that they went on, on, on another duty, but he retired, he said, there's no place I would want to be more than Arizona. So that's why we came back to Arizona after he retired, because this is where he wanted to be, so he could play tennis 365 days out of the year. He said, this is the only place that I know of that the sun shines every day. And so he retired in Tucson. He retired at Davis Martin. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoy the painting as a special gift from the community for his wonderful service to the Air Service and to our country. Thank you, and I'm sure his family will enjoy it as well. Thank you very Alma, much. Thank it's you been very my much. pleasure. Thank you.
Vernon Haywood, truly a heroic pilot. And you see the P-51 Mustang in the background. And that was the aircraft that was his, was his favorite aircraft. He was active in World War II uh, and Korea and Vietnam and up to uh, fairly near the present. He also flew many other aircraft besides the P-51. He has over 10,000 hours of flight time in the air. So he has a long history of flying mostly fighter aircraft. And um, uh, he was a colonel uh, when he retired, a colonel in the uh, Air Force. And here he is climbing into his P-86, uh, F-86, um, probably at Stewart Air Force Base um, uh, in, uh, I think it's New York. But in any event, this is uh, a member of the Tuskegee Airmen. And he was, like you said, a colonel, and he was a commander at Davis Mothin at one time. That's right, he was. And, and retired in Tucson. And retired and lived here in Arizona, and um, uh, was a marvelous example of the Tuskegee Airmen, heroic contributors to our success in World War II. So we're in front of the painting of Fred Ferguson, who was a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient out of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. This is his uh, Huey helicopter. I noticed the numbers, those are all correct for... Oh yes, they better be. <laughs> they are correct indeed. And those are F-4 fighter aircraft above that were used extensively in Vietnam. And this background, of course, uh, these are rice fields, These uh, this yellow expanse. And uh, there, are, there are a lot of rainstorms. I've been to Vietnam. I've flown in the F-4. I, I know this environment. And um, he was a Medal of Honor winner. And that always impresses me in a major way. Because to win the Medal of Honor, the nation's greatest award for valor, uh, is a great distinction. And he uh, rescued uh, downed uh, personnel in Vietnam at great risk to himself. But here he is uh, sitting on um, sandbags. Uh, you have and, him with a, uh, looks like a M79 grenade launcher. Yeah, that's a grenade launcher. And I, in the photograph that I had, I had a lot of great material to work from. He has these uh, cartridges, uh, these bullets, uh, I guess for his um, uh, pistol. I ought to ask him, I <laughs> haven't done that. but. Anyway, uh, there he is, and these are his command pilot wings. Uh, seemed appropriate to include in the painting. Uh, he's alive, and he, he, I know him. He's been to my studio, and it was a great pleasure meeting him. And he was actually on our committee to help uh, work on historic aircraft, and uh, oh, certainly a that. great representative yes. for Arizona aviators. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, thank you very much, and appreciate all the work that you've done I on this fabulous collection of art. Thank you. Thank you. With me is former mayor, Felda Williams, who is also my predecessor, my successor, and councilwoman-elect for my district, District 1. And you truly were one of the leaders of the ad hoc committee that looked at commemorating Arizona aviators and Arizona aviation and the importance of Arizona aviation uh, to our development. So tell us what you think about uh, the SPAD aircraft and uh, what's happened. Oh, I think it's a magnificent piece of art. But I want to say this. You are far too modest. This has been your passion, it's been your tenacity, and your leadership that pulled this all together and made it happen. As a former council person and mayor and, and all of those good things, I know that you want to leave a legacy for all the hard work you've done. And I wanted to congratulate you. You have left a legacy for not only today, and not only celebrating our history, but for future generations in this valley and for the millions that pass through this terminal. You have done a magnificent job and I am so proud of you and thank you for letting me be part of it. Well, thank you, but I think it would be a real tragedy if we didn't teach our young kids the importance of sacrifices that other people have made. They came before us, it gives us the freedom that we enjoy today. And uh, one thing I will ask you is since I, I couldn't get this as far along as I'd really like, it's gonna take a leader to uh, see it through and see more additions to the collection and would you consider uh, working on that? 
if you consider chairing the ad hoc committee to make it happen. That sounds like payback. <laughs> I believe it is. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd love to. We'll make it happen. Okay, thank you, Thelda. I appreciate all the work you did on this. Well, thank you very much and for all that you have done for the city of Phoenix in this valley. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this On the Issues, On the Road.